Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we have a special guest who is going to be talking about the elephant in the room when it comes to your listings, right? What happens if you get a negative review and how that impacts your listing and what you can do, number one, to prevent it, but number two, to remove it if possible. Um, Y'all know in previous episodes, I had, you know, many several years ago and even still into this day have had trouble removing negative reviews from customers um due to amazon's negligence really but some other things as well so what we can do to say you know protect ourselves and what we can do to prevent a certain uh certain negative reviews because uh, the reality is there's a lot of people that are are like to complain and they want to make their voices heard, especially if they feel ripped off. And people tend to leave a lot more negative reviews than they do positive because they don't want to take the time and energy to be like, yeah, I had a great experience because you know what? They expect a great experience. So when they don't get one, that's when they come and complain um, because they expected a, a, a good experience buying your product and then they didn't receive that. So Shane is, he has helped over 100, five, uh, Fortune 500 companies um, grow their digital assets and their companies through influencer marketing. He is a digital marketer by trade and he's been recognized by some of the leading organizations um, out there with marketing, but then made a pivot into digital marketing with Amazon with a focus specifically on e-commerce. And for the past five years, he's been working with a team with over 20 years of experience in Amazon, trying to figure out all the intricacies of um, product reviews and um, how those impact the sellers and what is the algorithm doing. And they have developed a 100% white hat negative review removal process and they're helping sellers to get negative remo- uh, reviews removed from their their accounts. So I'm very interested to see um, some of the data and maybe some of the statistics of what what negative reviews can actually impact you and how it impacts you and what you can do to prevent them and also to remove them if necessary. So without further ado, please welcome Shane to the show. Shane, welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you're here. Hey, I'm so excited. So, so excited. And you guys reached out and we were able to make it happen. So here we are. Yeah, that's great. You know, this is it's a big elephant in the room for a lot of people talking about product reviews and negative reviews. I mean, of course, we all want everyone to pour positive reviews on our wonderful brands. But the reality is most people come to complain. They don't come to be like, yay, this is the best product because they expect a good experience. And when they don't get one, they're the first people to be like, ah, you guys suck for whatever reason. So talking about that, first and foremost, let's just talk about negative reviews and what is the major impact that you have seen um, in in people's branding? Like if you get one negative review, I know that when you have three and you get one negative, it is literally detrimental to your brand. I have personally experienced this, unfortunately, and it wasn't even our fault, it was Amazon's fault. And so um, I've seen that, but tell me a little bit more in your experience. You're dealing with a lot of people that are having all these negative review problems and what is the biggest impact that you see on your listing and the brand when something negative happens well i mean as we all know if you're a seller and you're listening to this everybody has a story about a negative review you just do i mean if you've been doing it long enough whether it's a legit review that maybe it's something you need to change in regard to your product you need to pivot or it's you being attacked or maybe it's not even your fault which i think you might have a story that you might be sharing about that a little later but the the hard part is is it's frustrating i think we can all agree that it becomes very frustrating right um if you need to you know improve some stuff great then that that can be you know great for your brand and you go okay hey listen a lot of people are saying the same things maybe we need to look at this but being attacked and, and that's we built this company out of frustration of, of we had our clients that were being attacked I mean, you get to a certain point Unfortunately, people get attacked and, and that's just it's a very common thing once you get to a certain place. Once you start making some great money, you're like, oh, I can't figure it out Amazon, then you start getting attacked. There's always something that happens. And I always joke around me, and the only constant thing with Amazon or any of this has changed, right? I mean, you, you have to be on your toes, right? I mean, we kind of joke about that earlier. That we wouldn't be probably in business if there wasn't, you know, constant change there. And it, and it becomes hard, right? Because you're not always educated on that. So they turn to people like yourself that you can help you educate you on what what happened in Amazon this week? Because it could absolutely affect you next week. So um, negative reviews are, are 
are one of those things that a, a, a seller tell me that, and this was, I thought this was great. He says, you know what, it, it's like a, it's like having a sandal. It's like having a rock in your sandal that you can't take out. Like I can still walk, right? But it's very uncomfortable. And there's times that it hurts, you know, more than other times. Um, it, it's just one of those things. Like I, we all deal with it. And so, you know, what we do is what's been frustrating is that people have said, hey, you know what, I, I don't know what to do. Like there's nothing I can do. When I talk to people when we first started the company, when we were removing the Hager Review, started doing it. People are like, this, this, this isn't possible, right? From a white hat perspective, obviously black hat, there's tactics that we would never recommend. And, you know, obviously you put your brand at, at risk if you're doing that. For us doing this from a white hat perspective, I would go to events, Pow Wow and Prosper and all these shows and people would go, nah, I've heard about this. You can't do it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, perfect. I'm like, I, we can, let me show you. Let me quit. And so in the beginning, there was this long, big learning curve, not really learning curve, but really educating people that, hey, this isn't. This isn't something you're not hiring somebody in another country that's going to do some funny stuff that can put you in jeopardy. Like we are fully compliant with Amazon. So um, I think that was the biggest hurdle that we ran into. And then once the reviews started coming down for our clients, people were, I mean, we're in a good position now where once that starts happening, then everybody starts telling everybody. Amazon's very, uh, I'm saying sexual, it's maybe not the right term, but they, they, everybody talks. And so if you have a service, you have something that goes right, we've been very lucky that everybody's just been talking about it and it's really kind of, I don't want to say taken off virally, but we are that the only option that can do it from a white hat perspective. And it was not an easy journey. I will not, it's not like we, you know, have one template that we use and we just file these things. We've moved in so many different directions. Amazon's constantly changing stuff. I mean, they had updates just a few weeks ago. They're, it's constantly happening. We're constantly evolving with Amazon as we go through this thing. So um, I'm excited to tell everybody the story. I'm excited to, to, to let everybody know that there is an option. Um, there is a viable option that, that you know you can do and be able to remove your reviews and, and not be in some, you know you'd be fully in compliance with, you know, with Amazon. Well, and I'm I'm excited about that and for you guys to be able to review my account after this because of that. Like I'm going to tell my story here of having a product, our first um, private label product that we kind of it's our wholesale bundle private label um, that we had released into the Amazon universe and it was doing great and doing great and picking up a lot of steam and we were really one of the only people and the innovators of bringing this bundle together and um, you know it was expensive and it took us a while to develop what was going to be what we thought was the perfect um, fit for the niche that we were in. And it is a um, camping style product. So it is definitely used outdoors. And, you know, we, we went through many um, re what is that word? Redesigns to just make sure that it was good quality, sturdy. We were using the best products out there. I mean, when you're testing products, you're, I mean, I had a house full of this stuff going, okay, is this one the best? Is this one the best? What does it mean? I mean, we had this stuff all over and we finally, you know, did so much to launch this brand. And then um, within like the first three or four months, we were getting good reviews, good pictorial reviews where people are showing, oh, this thing's amazing. We love it. And then we had the curse, mm. what I call the curse, mm. um, of one that was returned, obviously, to Amazon. We didn't get a ton of returns, um, but it is something someone could probably use once and then put it back in the box and ship it back to you and just pretend that it was not as described or they don't want it or whatever. Um, and Amazon was not looking at those products and they were putting them right back on the shelves. Someone would return it even after 30 days. And uh, unfortunately, uh, someone used one sent it to Amazon, then Amazon decided that one was fine, sent it to another customer, and we got this horrible review with pictures that was like, we had never, we hadn't seen the inventory since it left our hands. And this is something that's bigger and bulky. So it's very, it can get expensive shipping it back and forth and things like that. Um, and so it was devastating when all of a sudden we didn't have very many reviews. I think we had like eight. And then this one, mm. one star negative review with literally like, five pictures to prove that they were accurate so what they were experiencing with that product that they got which was not brand new um was true they did experience this with this product the problem was it was amazon who put it back on the shelf and shipped them an unsanitary used item that we didn't that we didn't sanction yeah. and so and they and their their final review for us was too bad this was the customer's experience and it was your your product. They didn't take any responsibility and they said, nope, too bad. And we could even trace it with those order numbers. I'm such a data person. I'm like, if I just proved to them that it wasn't our fault and we could, and they still were like, too bad. 
Um, so situations like that, I'm probably, you probably hear all of the time. And I know how that negatively impacted our sales because we were doing really well, getting the brand off the ground and we're selling a certain number and all of a sudden this negative review comes in and then it was like crickets. We weren't yeah. getting any sales at all. And we realized that was pushing us down the algorithm because they're looking at this product of, well, we got seven really good reviews and one negative and that one negative just, just kind of took us out of the stratosphere. It, it'll it'll crush a launch. It, it really will, and then, and we see that not necessarily always on Amazon's fault, but you know people attacking other people as well. You go launch a new product, and they're a competitor. They'll go give you one negative review, and they know that just that totally knocked your launch out. So that's the hard part, right? With yours, especially when you're in a situation like that, if you feel like you're being attacked, that's one thing. You're like, God, this doesn't feel right. Blah blah blah. You were saying, hey, listen, like. I'm pretty sure Amazon, everything that I shipped to you was brand new. Oh, wait, no, it was because it was in a pallet and we wrapped it up and it was all brand new. And then it went to you guys. Our hands are, you know, you guys are shipping out and doing your thing and you guys are reshipping out a used product. Like they should take some responsibility for that. Um, the hard part is, is we hear a lot of those horror stories, right? That that, that doesn't happen. Um, and not making excuses for Amazon, busy, this, that, and the other, but it becomes it becomes very disheartening for yourself as a seller, right? You go, man, you put so much time and effort, and especially you get all these products at your house and you're like, oh my gosh, you're, you know, finally you get it to a point you're like, man, we cracked the code, this is awesome. And then next thing you know that something happens like that. So what we deal with is 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 a lot of negative reviews. Obviously we're dealing with hundreds of thousands that we're, that we're going through and we have, the, the software that we've created is an AI based software, but there's a lot of, there's a manual process as well. We don't, it's not fully, you know, we can't automate things on Amazon when we're filing cases and doing things. And some of that, um, some of those things have changed recently. Amazon's constantly changing policies, which is oh, okay, because we're uh, pretty tapped into a lot of groups and know what's going on in the Amazon space. So we've been been very thankful there. But in your situation, those are disheartening. Those are kind of things that keep you up at night, right? So when you put so much time and effort and you're like, man, especially when, as you said, you're a data person, you're like, listen, I can show you the proof and still it falls on deaf ears. I mean, that just... That is very difficult for us. We we've done consulting. We used to do consulting outside of the software, so we're very familiar with those types of cases and how to handle those types of cases. Um, we don't do a lot of that anymore. No, I'm not saying that we're not going to help you because we're going to talk offline, and we will help you, of course, because you're an angel. But the the thing is, not that other people aren't angels. I'm just saying you, you're very nice. But um, you had me on the podcast, so I have to assume you're an angel. So um, so yeah, so that we'll help you with that, but. The, the, what we look at is really uh, accounts that that have a large amount of negative reviews, right? That maybe there's something that happened. Once again, you had a product that just isn't great. We're not in the business to take that down. If we look at reviews and we say, hey, it sounds like you need to make some changes. Like I had a, um, an aggregate, I'm not going to say who, but I had an aggregator that came to me and says, hey, we're, we want to get rid of this product or whatever. They did whatever, 3,000 units they wanted to sell. And reviews were, you know, it's toxic, it's this. And and I was like, okay, tell me more about the product. And they're like, yeah, it, it is, but we're, it is toxic, but we got to get rid of it. And I'm like, okay, so you want, you want me to get rid of your reviews so you can like sell a product that is, you're telling me is bad and it's toxic. Like we don't do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to, to fool consumers, right? The idea is, is if you have a problem and you just want to get rid of inventory because it's toxic, which is a pretty, pretty, you know, crazy term to say that it's toxic yet you want to throw it out to the real world. Um, I, I, I'm not a part of that. I'm, we won't take any, you know, we're, I'm not, I don't want anything to do with that. Now, if we're looking at reviews and clearly people are, you know, sending you pictures or saying, oh my God, this product's terrible. And the picture they send is of a wallet and you sell, you know, a backpack. Great. That's what we need to do. Clearly you're being attacked. There's something going on there, right? As you touched on earlier, a lot of times people, you know, only put out negative reviews, right? That's when they, that's when they really want to, you know, um, I'm going to let everybody know what's going on. Positive reviews. You might tell a handful of people, but negative, you're going to get your pound of skin. I want the world to know what's going on. Or once again, you get to a certain status and making a certain type of money and you're, you have other people that you're competing with. And guess what? Unfortunately, not from an ethical perspective, but from an ROI perspective, a lot of these products, what we see is a lot of supplements and other, other industries where there's very, very high profit margins and it's, you know, it doesn't cost as much to manufacture and or to ship. That's when we see a lot of these attacks going on and it's, we were in the supplement industry, so that's we started to get attacked, and that's really how we kind of started the business. We were looking at this, and we just had a, a great little hero ace, and we weren't, you know, taking millions of dollars from anybody. And the people that were attacking us were making, you know, thirty million dollars a month or something. I'm like, you know, we're not. Your kids aren't going to not eat because I have a hero ace, and like you are still doing yeah. okay. I promise you. And so that became frustrating for us. And so we said, okay, how do we look at how we're getting attacked? 
ask them, how do we reverse engineer that? And obviously that's heavy on the data side, right? Looking at how can we prove to Amazon and saying, hey, this isn't me sending you an emotional email going, I'm being attacked, Amazon, look into this. What are you doing on your side? What the hell, right? Mm -hmm. What we're doing is saying, hey, let me, I, I know your terms of service. This is why it's in violation of your terms of service. Here goes tons of data. All you guys need to do is click on some things, take a look at a few things. You can make a, a, a great decision, hopefully a great decision within minutes. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we do. We kind of, the way we explain this is, it's like if somebody, the analogy I always use is like, if somebody broke into your car, right? And you call the local police department. These days they're not, it's not, and maybe in the sixties they would come out or seventies, but they're not going to come out. They broke the window. They stole your car stereo of $300. That really sucks. But they're not going to do a full report and bring out the helicopter and the dogs. And, and you know, mm -hmm. it's not that big of a deal for them anyways. So what we do is we say, okay, what happens if we went to the police department and said, here goes footage of the person breaking in the car. Here goes fingerprints that I took. Here goes them and the, the license plate of their car. I have footage of everything. Now can you go and arrest somebody? Now, they might do it. They might not. But my point is, is we're giving them all the information, right? You don't need to go take your resources. And Amazon is, you know, they have to make decisions in a certain amount of time because guess what? They have other people, other inquiries are coming in. So they they can't spend five hours on yours and double check this and they get a little jaded. So what we do is saying, hey, we'll give you all the information. Once again, just make a good decision, right? Right. If we're showing, we, we know your Amazon's terms of service, like the back of our hand. We know this is how it's in violation. Here goes the proof of that. If you need anything else, let, let us know. And that's how we've had our success to be able to move reviews. But I can tell you the first, and we joked around this in the beginning of the podcast, for the first three years, I was like, man, I should have tried to do something different. We, we should have, because it really was, I was like, man, we're not, are we going to be able to crack the oh, code? And it was after three years. I don't, I don't, don't know why even that get me smart. started. Um, you know, I, as an Amazon educator for nine years now, we just had a birthday here at Mommy and Come and congrats, been teaching Amazon congrats. for nine years and have 20 years of my own e-commerce experience with, with starting with eBay and then with Amazon. And so I know firsthand what it's like. It's like playing logical dodgeball with them. Um, just back and forth. Like it's that. like, it's just kind of crazy how, how um, they, their right hand does not know what their left hand is doing. And this is not an Amazon bash. This is like, I'm a tough love person. I'm an honest and authentic person. I'm never, ever going to tell anyone, even though I'm telling them sell on Amazon because I sell on Amazon and it has been very yeah. profitable, but I always lead the way with this is a bumpy road. And if you mm. learn to expect that, then the bumps don't surprise you as much. They're still frustrating and annoying, and we have to skirt around them and figure that out. But I'm also a very honest person. I don't want to do anything black hat. I have been at the wrath of Amazon for violating policies mm. before in 20 years. It's been, you know, a lot. Um, even on Amazon, I started in 2008. And so I am not without my, my own personal experiences with suspensions and ASIN suspensions and them holding my money and them ip claims and like if, if amazon could do it to someone it was probably me uh, at some point learning the things and then not even being in violation or claiming ignorance and they don't care about that so knowing the terms of service i love that you said that um that is our number one way that we also fight when i say fight with amazon or present cases to them is saying this is in violation of terms of service number 22 blah 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 here's how they violate it and here's what we'd like to see happen and then they you know very bullet point you know amazon does they don't they have um we, why at one point we interviewed somebody who um used to work at Amazon and they had to be super tight lipped about certain things. But what they did say was they had about 10 seconds to clear their queue yeah. on a regular basis. So some of them is very templated email. The AI is telling them, these are some suggestions you can send back. And then some of them a lot more detailed, but the more um, bullet pointed you are with presenting a case to them and here's links and here's attachments, the more apt you are to have them, um, just actually have a human review yeah. your case and not get a canned email back. And so I'm always telling everybody, you know, we, we struggle a lot with branding and G10 exemptions and getting your brand registered and all those different things and documents and compliance and IP claims and inauthentic, inauthentic claims and things like that. And, um, that's one of the things that I've always taught is like stack your evidence, make it so easy that for them to say yes to you yeah. for your case that, you know, and it's, it's unfortunate, but it's also preparedness for you. It's your business. And honestly, let me just be frank. Amazon doesn't care. 
very much about you. You are one tiny minnow in their their ocean. And as much as we want them to care so much about us and our business and take five hours to solve our case, they're not. So the easier we make it for them, the easier it is for us to get the answers that we want to need. And sometimes it's just, you know, they don't they don't adhere to their own policies to everyone. You'll see somebody doing this black hat thing over here and they're like, well, why can't I get away with that? I'm like, well, um, yeah. because you don't want to get away with that. You want to do things right yeah. so that you don't have to look, you constantly look over your shoulder. That's just, that's yeah. always me. Um, but yeah, those are those things that we have to constantly do to bring those cases to them and give them the evidence and the screenshots that they need to ultimately uh, really look at them. Yeah. I mean, you want to build a long-term business. If you want to build a short-term business, you can do hacks and do this and do that. But eventually they're going to come and get you. I mean, it, that's just what it is. You're on a timeline. So if you're looking to make, try to make a ton of money in a short amount of time, that's probably not the best way to do things, right? The idea is, is to do it all from a, a white hat perspective. So you touched on so many things when you were talking. Like there was someone, I was like, oh my gosh, you so many, so many good things to talk about. So what's interesting to me, and you, you said this, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. That's so absolutely true. And for us, we actually use that as leverage. And because and, in the beginning, it sucked because you talked to Jennifer and then you talked to Bob and they're like, I don't know. You're like, I just talked to you guys yesterday. Like, no, you didn't talk to me. I'm like, do you guys not have like a CRM? Like, you guys are insanely, like, you have a hundred trillion dollars or whatever. No, you, like, nobody talked. So, what we've done with that, and one thing we realized is that we can file cases with different departments. And so if one department says no, we can file a case with another department. And so that's benefited us. In the beginning, it was very frustrating, but it's benefited us because, you know, the, the analogy I always use is like, because I did this only this once, but um, I wanted to spend the night at a friend's house. And so I went to my mom and said, hey, can I spend the night at St. John's house? And she said, no. And I was like, okay. She goes off to work and I went to my dad. Hey, can I spend the night at John's? Yeah, yeah, go spend the night at John's. So I went over to spend the night at John's. Needs to say that Saturday morning was a little interesting. My mom was not one to, to beat around the bush. I came home. She was, how was John? I said, oh, it was great. She goes, didn't you ask me first? And I was like, I did. But then I asked dad. She goes, yeah, yeah, we're not going to do that again. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, sounds good, mom. I love you. I'll never do that again. So, you know, shout out to my mom, by the way. She was an excellent mom if she listens to the podcast. But um, what it, what I'm telling you there is that, that actually benefited us. That if the department doesn't say yes to, to our claim, then we can refile and what we're doing constantly doing is figuring out how to trigger the AI, right? How to get us to a human and not, because we know that AI is a, you know, they, they you send out something to them and they automatically will say, you know, the good or this isn't good. Like, do we run this up the chain? So we're, you know, templates, and I think templates, but like something we used two weeks ago, we might not use today, might not work anymore today. So we're constantly testing stuff. I can't tell you how much we're testing stuff with Amazon. To try to see what works, to see what that next level of, of things that work I with them. I feel so like that's all Amazon is when you're working with them is just you're constantly in test mode. Everything's beta test. We're going to A, B test this. We're going to test that because does this work or does that work? And I know sometimes my clients will just be like, okay, like this is like kind of a crazy ride. And I'm like, honestly, I have a lot of like things in my back pocket for you to try because sometimes this works and sometimes this works. And it really just depends on the person or the AI or the department that you're reaching out to and sometimes even the mood that the person's in like if you get someone on the phone um a lot of times they can solve a lot of problems for you if they're willing and if you're nice about it <laughs> um so it really just kind of depends um on how you're doing that so you have to have multiple strategies and tactics to be able to get to them because there's such a huge corporation that there's not yeah. there's not joint communication everywhere every department seems to be independent and separate from one another so that can like work that. to our advantage when we're trying yeah multiple ways to get through their their security system or whatever it is that they're allowing you yeah. to go through the door. <laughs> well, and that's that's one of the things that we do. We're filing cases and it's going to depend on, on what it is. What's interesting is a lot of times the, the first few cases we're filing, depending on the client and the product, there's so many variables that we look at. A lot of the times that's just to get their attention. That's not necessarily to get them to, to room the review and each, so we have so many, we don't even have time to talk about the different strategies that we use for each one, but the goal of it is, is to, okay, let's make an evaluation. Let's take a look at this. Which department do we think is going to be best that they would respond to these types of emails? And why is that, right? Is that brand registry? Is that going to be, there's been some changes obviously in the last few weeks, but it's, it's just, it's interesting because it is that we're constantly trying new stuff. You just have to, because what happens is after a month, two months, three months, a week, maybe some hours, Amazon goes, okay, they're sending these now, right? Like we don't share templates with anybody, but now they're sending this and we've got to be ready for them if they don't accept that template anymore, that there's a different way of sending it. And there's terms, there's certain things that we do. 
Um, and there's reasons why we file some cases over other cases to start to get Amazon get used to saying yes. There's, it's just a lot. Me, when we started the company, I was very naive. I thought, oh, we'll just file cases and give them tons of information. That can work. But as you know, that doesn't always work, right? And once again, you touched on, there's these things called humans that they're, every once in a while you get in contact with. And these humans could just have gotten a fight with their wife or their son or their daughter and not be say no to everything. Or they could have just gotten engaged and they're the happiest they've ever been that day. And hey, everything is awesome. Let me help you. And absolutely, I'm here to knock it out for you. You just don't know, right? And so we wanted to say, okay, great. If we feel adamantly about something, we're like, hey, this is clearly fraud. Like we have the, and somebody says no to that, we fight with other departments. Because our goal, we don't, all of our stuff that we do is performance driven. So if I don't remove a review, guess what? My kids don't eat, right? Yeah. My kids my kids are doing okay. They're eating. But you get my point. Like I don't want anybody yeah. to call anybody on me or something. My kids are eating. Yeah. But the, the the but so that's what we look at is like since it's all performance driven, there's really no risk for the sellers. And for us, if we feel strongly about something, we'll run it up the chain. We can have different emails and different people that we can contact um, because we know that they'll react to certain things. And whether it be brand registry or you know somebody's affecting your brand, a lot of different things that can happen. But it's a lot. A lot of it, I mean, the trial and error Let's in the beginning Let's talk about big. brand registry even for just a moment with that, because I am constantly pushing brand registry um, with my people. I'm telling them, get your trademarks. I even teach Very entire important. modules about these things in my course to make sure that they understand. Um, I filed multiple trademarks myself and I've done okay with those things. I know kind of the process in and out. And I'm always encouraging people. I'm like, literally, you can have this filed by the end of the day if you have your assets already ready. Um, but like, have you experienced um, a lot more positive? Um, I, I feel like I have, at least for brand registry, things are a lot easier to get it done when I have a registered brand with Amazon. They have a trademark. It's so much easier to get things removed when you have a brand. Has that been your experience? A thousand percent. Yeah, yeah. If you protected your brand and Amazon says, hey, this is clearly your brand, you're one step closer to getting reviews removed on your own, right? I mean, at that point, because you have somebody that you, you've got their attention, and you, you've done something to protect your brand. So you're showing, hey, this is legitimate. I've done everything that I need to do. I've checked the boxes to be able to make that happen. That's one of the big things that when we do our calls with, with sellers is that we just ask them, have you, you, have, you, you, have you registered your brand? If they have, great. Then for us, it's not, if they haven't registered their brand, there's still things we can do. It's not like we don't take them on as clients. But for us, that, that says, okay, great. You've taken the time and the effort to be able to solidify that you have a solid brand. Amazon's recognized that. Now you have a leg to stand on if we need to file cases. It's just, you know, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of a, it's, it's a good thing once again. So now we can go and say, okay, you're, this just shows that you're a legit brand, right? You've taken the effort, you've taken the time to be able to protect your brand, and Amazon's verified that. That's, it's awesome. That that gets us head in the right direction. Yeah, for sure. Okay, and let's. We didn't even. We should have defined this like early on, but we just haven't, and it just kind of dawned on me now. It was like, what is your definition of a negative review? Is it one star only, three stars? Like, where do we divide that between like good, not so good, and how are we so somewhat penalized if we get one of these uh, uh, negative reviews? Yeah, good question. So when we're filing cases with Amazon and, and removing reviews, we're going after critical reviews. So we go after the one, two, and three stars. Now. With that being said, the a one star is not going to be equal to a five star, right? A one star is going to be weighed a lot heavier because if, if so, in your situation, if you had eight, seven positive reviews, one negative review, in theory, if they were all even, it wouldn't make that big of a deal, right? You're saying, hey, one bad move, seven good reviews, we're still at you know eighty percent or whatever the or you know x amount of stars. The problem is, is they're just not weighed the same, right? So you're you're one star, and I've heard. You know, a one star equals five, five stars. I've heard people say 25 stars. There's been different things and it depends on competition and category. There's a lot of things that you that we can look at there. But we do know that that a one star is nowhere close to a five star when it comes to, you know, equivalency. Um, the same thing with a two and a three star. Like a three star is not going to be as heavily weighted as a one star. A two star is not going to be, you know, it's going to be a heavier weight than a three star. So, but we go after critical reviews and we had originally when we had done the pricing model we had said oh maybe we'll do one star differently two stars and three stars we go after all critical reviews and so we have one base price for all of those for the one two and three stars um with with the goal being obviously to you know get them up in the bsr or if they, they've dropped down from a, you know 4.3 to 4.2 to get them back up to that that position or if you're going to sell your brand to be able to clean it up and so you don't have as many negative reviews there's a lot of people we want people to be more proactive than reactive but as you know, you know, most of the time, and I use the, the car analogy, you know, when you go to get a, an alarm on your car, which I think everybody has these days, but let's say 10 years ago, 
if somebody broke your window, then you went and got an alarm on your car. So we always tell people, hey, try to be proactive about this. Like you don't want to drop down and get your lose 30% of your sales from a 4.3 to a 4.2. And then you're like, oh shoot, what do we need? You know, now we got to figure this out. Like solidify your your space, right? Solidify your spot. And so I mean, we've seen clients, once again, that drop can be 10, 15, 20, 30% for some of them by by a from a 4.3 to a 4.2 or something like that. So um, you know, it's a, it's a, a constant evolving, I'm not going to say game, but it's a constant evolving, you know, algorithm and, and things. And it's, uh, it's been, a, it's been a fun journey for sure. Yeah, for sure. Now, you know, we're talking about the relevancy of five stars versus one stars. Um, why isn't it just easier to try to go after more five stars and hoping that this negative two or three or 10 will just eventually kind of even out and go away? Hey, if we get a thousand people to do positive reviews and really push for positive reviews, then that's just going to affect the negative And maybe we just don't have to worry about that. So how do you how do you deal with that? That question? Yeah. Yeah. So there's really two things. So one is we always recommend going after four and five stars. And then that's a very basic thing and kind of like a, well, no, duh, but it's, it's kind of crazy down of people that aren't, don't have a strategy going after the four and five stars. So the, what I explain to people is this, the analogy I always use is like a diet. You know, if you want to go and you want to lose weight, if you work out and you eat right, you're going to lose weight faster. I mean, that's doing those two things, right? I I historically have been a guy that will go and work out and I don't always eat great, right? Like I, my wife makes amazing food, but I eat too much. I drink beer, I'm Irish. There's nothing I can do, right? I'm, 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 I'm a victim of, of, of who I am. So, so what happens there is I don't, I'm not going to shed 10 pounds in two months, right? Because I'm not really not committing to both things. So what I tell people is like, hey, listen, we'll take care of the critical reviews, right? We'll, we'll knock those down, which are going to be extremely valuable, but you got to get the four and five stars. You just really do. If you had hundred four and five star reviews and you get a bad review it's not going to hurt you as much and if, if you have once again three four or five star reviews and you get a negative review you're done i mean you, you are literally done and in those situations it becomes it's hard because you spend all this money and we see a lot of that with launches we talked a little bit about that at the beginning of this so always get four and five star reviews as many as you can obviously right have some kind of a strategy there but i always recommend go after the four and five stars um, and then we'll go after this. And once again, now what we're going to be doing is we're looking to shift this, right? We're looking for Amazon to go because we know the minute you get a negative review, you start going down in your BSR. You start getting less sales. You start feeling that and going, man, what is going on here? But if you're getting tons of reviews and we're taking care of these, you'll see that transition if that's what you're looking for sooner than later. Do you think that Amazon's going to ever move away from non-verified purchase reviews? I mean, that's been, it's been well known would, in the community of Amazon that they think it's ludicrous that I can go to Amazon right now and pick a product and leave a review without ever making a purchase. Now, at least it says verified purchase versus just a, a review, but anyone, you know, if I, if I was selling, you know, I always have a back stretcher, but if this is something I was selling on Amazon and you're like, oh, you see that you could literally not have to buy it and go leave a review. And how is that? fair in the community of, of products and how how amazon weighs that versus people that actually bought something from that actual seller or that actual brand and then left a review it's ludicrous i, I mean it's, it's crazy that you i mean it just there's no other way to explain it I and mean, I, i'd like to most of the time i'm able to justify some things that amazon does sometimes there's things a little you know further right and left that i go oh, i don't know about that one um that the fact that's where we see a lot of attacks happening. So one thing, what we do is remove reviews. So there needs to be something physically written there. So if somebody's something physically written, we can do that. Now ranking, you know, any anything else outside of that where people are just clicking something or they have a non-verified review um, that looks like it, you know, like it's a legit review. Those are a lot of the things that we go after because if, if there's, as long as they're saying something that's in violation of Amazon's terms of service, we have a leg to stand on. But the problem is, is a seller that's so frustrating. Like, really, there's you don't need to verify that they purchased anything. I mean, there was right, and they, anybody can write a review. Like, what could go wrong, <laughs> right? Like, you got to be <laughs> kidding me. I mean, I know companies. We know of companies that you know what they do is they'll hire somebody just go do that. Go write negative reviews to their competitors. And that, I mean, it's not. I'm a big fan of karma, so I do believe you know there's going to be a point that something's going to not happen to them. But you, you get my you know I mean, it's going to come back around. I'm, I'm a big fan of the universe and energy and how things work. You go do bad things. Guess what? You're probably going to get an ingrown toenail. Yeah, you'll reap what, you will reap what you sow one way or the other. <laughs> exactly. It, it will come back to you. Now, the problem is that doesn't stop people from doing unethical things and attacking your brand and writing negative reviews that when they haven't even bought the product, that that's a big problem. 
that's a big problem. Yeah. And I know these are just things that, you know, I'm, I'm all about just being up front and I'm not going to sugarcoat any of that stuff. We've all just noticed and see it. And we're like, when are you going to do something about this? I mean, if there's no, there, there's no one is shocked that Amazon right now is being sued yeah. by 17 states and the FTC for, for violation of monopoly laws and, and other, you know, uh, taking advantage of their own data and, and using it against us the little people um and so i mean i'm not i'm advocating for justice and for change because yeah. i think amazon's still an amazing company it, it, obviously they build something that everyone at least customers which is their number one focus um is that, that that people love we do love our our variety and our free two-day shipping free <laughs> whatever that means when you're paying <laughs> amazon prime fees um but at, uh, we digress we know we love amazon and we're we, purchasers is just as much as sellers and so with that we just have to work within it's almost like the government right we have to work within the system that we have and we don't always not going to like who's in office or who's here or who's there we're not going to always agree Agree with everything but we're gonna try to play nice and so that's yeah. what i'm trying to do with amazon and always have been and i see your company is doing that too to be like how do we when i say work around that doesn't mean black hat work around means yeah they don't know their ass from their elbow sometimes and so we need yeah. to really like kind of get in there and be like okay well um how do we again that's like that logical dodgeball i'm talking about all the time i'm just like trying to navigate because they've got all kinds of different things going different directions but th that's the good news here is that there these are solvable problems it just takes yeah. people like you and people like me and other service providers and other educators to get in there and get our hands dirty so that we can say you know what this is a real pain and a real headache but we also have solutions and so um yeah. i love that that track fuse is using this as a solution especially for bigger companies who are having you know, I mean, I, I can tell you, I haven't really been super attacked by a lot of competitors. My stuff isn't that cool. Um, I mean, it's not something that everyone, it's not a household name. It's not something that's selling five to 10,000 units a day and things like that. So I've kind of, you know, I kind of hide in the little niches where, where it's easier and people aren't like, oh, let me attack you. Um, so I always just say, I like the, the mediocre stuff that no one's going to mess with. Like I don't have, I have yeah. like 15 reviews, um, but in that i also have experienced that negative impact because if you only have 15 reviews and you get one it can push you off the planet and so my yeah. one of my final questions here is um what do you, can you also teach or share or some tips for people to prevent these negative reviews so that we i mean obviously we can't prevent those attackers from people that are just literally um competitors trying to use black hat tactics but um as sellers like what do we do to make sure that we're you know hopefully not even getting negative reviews yeah, it's hard because you, as you touched on, if you if you're in the middle, right, you're not you know infringing upon somebody else's in the, in theory territory, then you're probably not going to get attacked, which is awesome. I, I would recommend you know it's hard because you want to be successful, but if you get to a certain level of success, you get on certain people's radars, and that's when you can get attacked. And so it's it's hard to say, hey, don't be too successful, right, and stay in the middle of that where you're under the radar. Um, what I would recommend, and you you touched on this earlier, is really understanding Amazon and understanding what Amazon needs to see and hear from you and giving them heavy data, right? Because as you talked about, I've heard different times, but you're saying yet somebody said, hey, I have 10 minutes to clear my queue or 10 seconds to clear your request. So imagine if you have 10 seconds and the first second is reading the subject line, right? So now we got nine more seconds. How are you going to, right? We talk about bullet points. We talk about heavy data. That's going to be very, very important, right? Nobody, don't give them a full paragraph and waste four seconds on telling them how you're screwing their business and your kids aren't going to eat. Mm -hmm. Not that Amazon doesn't care, but Amazon doesn't care. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just, they don't, you have to realize like at the end of the day, what they care about is the buyers. Right. And yeah. you as a seller, the sooner you touch on this, the sooner that you realize that you are replaceable. And once again, this is not me bashing Amazon. I'm just being realistic. No, you have to great. realize like, okay, you want to stay in good graces with Amazon. And so, what we have to learn is how do we talk to Amazon? That's a very, very big thing. Amazon doesn't care about your emotional status. What they care about is what is the solution? What is the problem? How do you give me the evidence to show that there's a problem here? And it clearly goes against their terms of service, which they follow very closely. Um, and how are you going to be able to educate them on that? And you have 10 seconds to do that or 15 or 20, but assume you have 10. So how do you pull the points that you talked about? Don't, you know, I've had clients write, you know, 20 paragraphs they're only going to read the first two paragraphs. So your last 18, where you really drive it home, 
Nobody's going to see that. I mean, really think about that. So it's not a dissertation or, you know, your thesis yeah. at the end of something like we need to be um, clear and, and concise with this kind of stuff. Bullet point and to the point, straight to the point and every evidence. If you have links or attachments, screenshots are a lifesaver. I feel like almost every For case. Sure that I upload a screenshot to with some proof. They're like, oh, this is clearly seen in the evidence. Okay, great, moving on. You know, we've even had, um, our, our latest is we've had some long running ASINs that have been uh, amazing for many, many years. And yes, competition has come in and out, but we were grandfathered into certain things. Um, and now mm -hmm. all of a sudden the bots are catching certain things that they're considering IP claims, except we have proof and we have letters of, of authenticity and we have all these yeah. things like showing them. But every couple of months it comes up because of the bots and because of the ai and so we have to resubmit the same thing we're like um remember three months ago and we link back to the case that we were already cleared on and we're like remember this here's more evidences here's our letters here's this oh yeah. i'm sorry you're welcome here we go we but in the meantime we lose money because they take our listing down and they're like you of have course. 30 days to comply and then we're like we've complied over and over again um and so you know that's really the the you know it's kind of the reality that we live in um and this is not again i know a lot of people probably listen to this show and they're like you guys are always bashing amazon we're like no we're, we're just aware of the problems and we're also very interested i can see you and your company and the people you're working for too are very interested in the solutions because we also know we yeah. still want to sell here um it's a great place to have um you know what i consider small people like myself like small people who want to release brands and want to bring you know wholesale bundles to the table in ways that that are gonna you know the customers love what they're receiving from me most of them do and so i want to keep producing that and giving the customers what they want and amazon's just um it's just kind of a labyrinth of of what corners you're going to turn around and where you're going to go and what kind of problems you're going to run into and tomorrow they might change policy number 1482 and you know we're all back into you know a different place but in the meantime it's just kind of working to navigate within their wonky parameters and so um we we agree that we we do still do business with amazon and we appreciate them as a company and we're advocating for some great change and that's that's great but in the meantime you know, we want to follow the good policies, stay in their good graces and do bring products to the table that the customers will be happy with. Because the more and more that we focus, the more we need to understand that us as sellers are not who Amazon cares about the most. So as a buyer, if you're on the buyer side and you call Amazon with a the problem, they're like, what can we do to make it right? Like they literally will give you your money back and then some and send you another one and, and, and um, yeah. just to keep you happy. Um, but they don't often do that for us as sellers. And so we have to kind of do our own advocacy of, of showing them their policies and just say, hey, this is not in compliance with this and here's why and here's the evidence and please help me. And usually with a couple of pokes, they... They, they'll turn to the right side when when provoked enough. <laughs> Please look at my case over yeah, and over. I mean, over. It is. It, it, and that's one of our things that we talk about is that, you know, it's it's the having to get back to them over and over and over until somebody can get somebody to respond. I mean, it's the nuances of Amazon. And, and if it wasn't Amazon, it'd be another company. So it's mm -hmm. not, as you say, we're not bashing Amazon. It's the reality of the situation. But this, when you listen to podcasts like this and you get the reality of it, then when it happens, you go, okay, I've heard about this and this is how I can deal with it. So it's helpful to have these healthy conversations about it. You might not be excited about it as a seller, but Amazon doesn't care what you feel about it, but you just have to figure out now, how do I move forward from here? And so that's where these podcasts and education and coaches like yourself make it extremely valuable because what happened three weeks ago could not be what you're going to be doing, having to do today. And so things mm -hmm. are constantly changing. As long as you're okay with that, if you expect to just jump on Amazon and make millions of dollars and, you know, go off to the Bahamas and drink exotic cocktails. Um, I would advise only having one exotic cocktail because after that some stuff's going to hit the fan and you got to be ready for that. And, it, and that's okay. It's, you know, they talk about the journey of being an entrepreneur and, and they used to say it's a straight line and then they have a squiggly line. That's just the reality of the situation. Oh so, yeah. yeah it is Up, what it down, is. twists and turns, upside down, all kinds of things. And I think the longer yeah. you're in the game and it's really, this is about setting realistic expectations. So I know a lot of people, you know, come into yeah. Amazon and it, whether they're new or they've been around the block a few times, the reality is, is that you need to expect challenges. <laughs> You have to expect them. So many people are so disappointed when they do things and they're like, oh, Amazon gave me problems. I'm like, 
just know that like it's almost like the first thing i want to be like welcome to amazon here's what to expect you're going to have problems you're going to have issues you're going to have frustrations you're going to have all this but that's also not that's not uh, there's nothing new under the sun there's nothing new about amazon yeah. if you if you're an entrepreneur and say you're not selling on amazon say that you're you're opening a, a pool care store or something i don't know but like that's what you're doing like you're going to expect to have problems there there's going to always be yeah. issues there's never um you're gonna have customer issues you might have marketing issues maybe you have a building permit issue like there's a, if you don't expect challenges and obstacles in business you have your head in the sand and that's one of the first things that i'm i i, I tell yeah. people like if you're going to be an entrepreneur you better put on your armor because you're gonna need it and that's just how it is like if you want to yeah. go and work for a boss there's pros and cons to that too if you don't mind being told what to do and where to be and how to do and and your creativity doesn't matter and you can come here and i just do what you're told to do and comply and check your boxes there's pros and cons to that too you have the security maybe of having a job and going and getting a paycheck whether the company is is profitable or not and as an and as an entrepreneur you don't get that security but you get the flexibility of someone not telling you what to do and you get to make the decisions and you can be creative and you can bring products to the table and you get to work with amazon which has its own set of problems so you know it's kind of like pick your poison and so this is the, <laughs> the poison i'm picking and it, it's definitely um has more pros than cons um but we just need to be For aware sure. of that so that we're not constantly frustrated and disappointed because we can be frustrated in the moment but i'm just one of those that's like okay this sucks we feel it we validate it we're like yeah amazon's dumb sometimes but i my constant phrase is this is a solvable problem so let's get into defining yeah. the problem. And then there are multiple solutions usually to problems. So the faster we get to problem solving, um, the, the easier it is on our own um, energy and our own peace and our own um, entrepreneurship of knowing, OK, these fires can be put out. Sometimes they get bigger than others yeah. and sometimes there are different types of fires, but they do they, they're solvable problems and so thank you Absolutely. so much for coming here and introducing us to track views tell us uh tell our audience where they can reach out to you where they can ask more questions and how they find you yeah yeah absolutely so once again thanks for having us that's always nice to, to talk with people who've been in the space for so long and have done so many amazing things for the for amazon sellers but yeah so if you go our the website's called traceviews.ai so it's not .com it's .ai you can go take a look at that there we got some testimonials and some other fun stuff talks about our methodology and how we do things um, we're actually going to be at quite a few shows as well as we're going into like you know um so you guys can we'll probably be reaching out and see some people there as well you can reach out to us through the website my actually direct email is just shane s h a n e at traceviews.ai um, we also have a, a special offer for your audience as well or we're, we're offering um Five hundred dollars off their if they wanted to sign up with us. We do a, a demo and show you how the software works. You have a great dashboard, all this stuff. You can see all the reviews that get removed. You can you know see all of that. It's very awesome. Obviously, we can't really show you on the on the podcast today, uh, but you get five hundred dollars off. So what they can do is we're going to send you over. We have a landing page that we're making exclusively for your audience. They can click on it, and then they'll take them over there, and then they can sign up, and we'll do a demo for them and show them how everything works and see if they qualify. Hopefully, they don't. Hopefully, they don't have enough negative reviews, and hopefully, they don't have to spend any money with us but you know if you made it to a certain place and you're being attacked or something's happening there we'll, we'll do an evaluation of that and see what we think we can do for you so um, we're looking forward to working with your audience well thank you so much for that and you guys i just want to remind you that if you're not there yet this is just one of those things uh, a resource that like once it happens to you, you're going to be really thankful that you have someone to call that, that can at least give you advice and say, hey, maybe it's one just one negative review. These guys are experts and you can at least talk to them for a few minutes and say, OK, maybe I don't qualify because I don't have you know a ton of reviews to remove. Um, but, you know, even just these things, some of these tips of, of, of um, multiple channel, uh, multiple ways of, of um, submitting cases and talking about them using evidence, using bullet points and again, preventing those negative reviews so that we don't have them in the first place by selling really good products, selling good products, going yeah. after the positive reviews, having a system and a process for that, which they can also help you with. So regardless of that, this is a resource. It's almost like um, they tell you it's like you don't you don't you hate your insurance until you need it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. your car insurance, you're like, oh, every month you pay this bill and you're like, I'm the safest driver and I've never been in Iraq and I don't I hate paying this car insurance. And then you're like, until 
someone hits you yeah. and wrecks your car and the car seats or maybe the bikes that were on the bike rack that they hit or your entire, entire, entire car is totaled and all of a sudden that insurance becomes extremely important. And that's just one of these things. So if you don't have any negative reviews yet, that's fine, but this is a resource for you when you do, because if you sell on Amazon long enough, you will encounter these problems and we're here with the solutions. So hang in there. It's not all bad. It's not all doom and gloom. There are solutions, um, but having that realistic expectation of, okay, most of us go through this. You're not on your own. You have resources, people like Shane, people like me, that are gonna help you. So thank you again for your time and your service. I don't take that for granted. I appreciate you being here on the Amazon files and y'all, I know. Same thing I say to you all the time. You have, you could be anywhere else doing any other thing right now. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for listening to this podcast and um, I invite you again, mommyincome.com forward slash subscribe. If you haven't subscribed and gotten our free training, you need to get our free training. It's really going to change your perspective on the way that you look at selling on Amazon, mommyincome.com forward slash subscribe. And again, thank you, Shane, for your time. Y'all, we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.